Shar Margolis, Shar Communications Incorporated, and Shar Vision LLC do not endorse or offer for any purpose but entertainment the views of any guest or other expert on Shar Vision or UBN. I knew things before they happened from the time I was a child. At the age of eight, I saw a spirit at the foot of my bed and didn't know what it was. And in my 20s, I finally realized I had a special ability that could help others. I have learned that love never dies. There is a spirit world that can communicate with us, and we all have the gift of intuition. Join me, and together we will explore the possibilities of the unknown from beyond and more. This is Shar Vision. Hi, everybody. It's Sunny and Shar, and today is June 26th, 2020. And I'm so honored to have a, a very famous attorney on tonight who I've known for a long, long time since elementary school. And um, he, he practices in Southfield, Michigan, and he focuses on personal injury and civil rights litigation and medical malpractice. And what we're going to speak about tonight is um, civil rights and a case he's working on. And also he was the representative for Kevorkian for the right to die with dignity. It is my true honor and pleasure and, and warms my heart to introduce Jeffrey Feiger. Well, thank you, Charlene. I know you as Charlene. Everybody else knows you as Char. I but know. I like your intro too, because I saw your that little book intro and remember I knew all I knew you back then with all those pictures. I can tell everybody about you. Yeah, you can. We know we've known each other for a long time. We ever we even went to see West Side Story when we were in sixth grade. We did. We did. Yeah. So we, I think we've known each other for over 60 years, is it? I mean, elementary At school. Least. Yeah, yeah. At least. Yeah. Definitely, because we went to um, elementary school together, too. Right, right. And you were in, you were in a couple of my classes, for, for sure. I, and had, I, I had to have been, because we grew up together. I went away to country day school for a little while. Um, I left elementary school and then I went to Detroit Country Day School and remember Robin Williams was in my class at Detroit Country Day School. That's, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I grew up with Robin Williams in 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th grade and then I came back and was in Oak Park High with you. Yep, and we graduated together. That's right, we graduated together and from Oak just... Park High. One of the great places, by the way, to graduate from. We um, so your viewers could know it was a great school in the class. The next class we graduated, uh, my brother was in the next class and he and Don Faganson, who's Don was, and um, I think um, uh, Marcia Levy all had number one hits. Uh, Caddyshack, My Sharona, and Lay Down Sally. I Three number one hits from Oak Park I remember High your brother, Doug. God bless his soul. Yeah. I remember him. Yeah, so we had a lot of uh, famous people, including you, come out of Oak Park High. Well, really, you're the one who's <laughs> the, really, you're the legend. You, yeah. to, to me, you're the legend in our class. But we, yeah. we were so lucky to grow up where we grew up. and it We was had a lot of smart people, a lot of smart kids come out of Oak Park High. It was a very unusual time. Um, and... It was unusual in the sense that so many really bright and and um, I don't know um, progressive just really not just progressive but uh, uh, successful people mm -hmm. um, graduated and came out of Oak Park High. It was a wonderful. It was a little community. We didn't have that many people. We were only we're a suburb of Detroit, northern suburb of Detroit. We had thirty thousand uh, um, citizens in Oak Park and. So we were pretty isolated in the sense that we, we really hung out all together. We, and it and was a great time to grow up, wasn't it? It was an amazing time. And, and when we see each other again, it's like family. I mean, everybody really, really loves each other. It's, it's, it's so unusual. In fact, I just, 
I just got a, a Facebook thing from Barbara Schlesel Kranitz. Hi, Barbara. Yeah, I, I had a I had a crush on Barbara Schlesel when I was young. You she did. doesn't know, but I was in fifth grade. But I had a I had a crush on her. She was a very cute girl. Oh yeah, she still is. And so yeah. she's I I know she's listening to this now. Did she know you had a crush on her? I don't know. Saying? I don't think so because I mean I never could enunciate it, but I did have a crush on her. <laughs> I thought she was really really cute. It was, a, and I'm not kidding you. I mean, it, 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 there couldn't have been a greater place to grow up in in the 60s than in Oak Park. I don't know why, but it just was an amazing place to grow up. It yeah, really it, was. I mean, it, even now when we go back, I mean, we have reunions, you know, 40 and 50 years later, and we get hundreds and hundreds of our classmates. It's like I, my wife's class. Uh, graduated about the same time from another city near Detroit, mm -hmm. and they get virtually nobody in their at, at their reunions, and we get hundreds of people. And then we never want to leave. I and, know. And we and we spend the whole like for four days. It feels like, good. It, it feels totally like going back. It really does feel like going back home. I can't explain it, but it really does. It is. It's like and and I see everybody. That we that we went to school with his family. That's how I feel. Did you see the Netflix movie about me? You didn't mention that. Oh, well, you. Oh, I did it's, not. I think it. my my assistant Sam tells me it's the number six movie on okay, Netflix. Wait, it's tell called, us what it, tell us it's what called it's Trial called. by Media, and uh, it's a docu series. It's produced by George Clooney, and it uh, just got dropped about two or three weeks ago. And it's called Trial by Media. The the one about me is uh, episode number one, and um, it's my assistant tells me it's because I don't know anything about you know this the computers. I still use a flip phone, but she yeah, tells I me heard, it's the I number. Heard about that, but we need yeah, to talk about that. <laughs> it's the number six uh, film on Netflix, so you should watch it. Oh, and what's it about? Uh, it's about my trial, the Jenny Jones case. Oh my goodness! Okay. So you haven't I, even seen that? No, I, I'm going to watch it though. I didn't. You I had no to. idea. You had no idea. I'm doing a show with you, Shar, the mind reader from LA, <laughs> and you didn't know that I'm in a new movie. <laughs> what, what kind of mind reader are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, that's the deal. I'm not a mind reader. I'm a medium. I talk to the spirits. <laughs> so I so I, I'm saved by that. Yes. So. so um, let's, can we, so you didn't know about that? Well, your viewers will see it. Yeah. Well, and you'll well, see it sure. too. It's I'm on Netflix. It. And then maybe you'll come back and we'll talk about it. But right. I want to talk about this, the George Floyd and the civil rights, because you are such an advocate for civil rights and you've done so much. I mean, we were, when we were in school, segregation started. Well, it didn't start segregation. Segregation well, I mean, was always there. Integration. Was, uh, right. was started integration and civil rights uh the 60s was the uh was the point at which uh you know there was a recognition in america with the uh, uh dr martin luther king and the mm -hmm. and the push for civil rights it began in the early 60s and then all through high school with us and of course we remember in 68 when dr king was killed we were there and we felt that we were aware of what was going on. We had uh, the largest riot in the history of the United States in, in Detroit in 67. Mm -hmm. um, I remember. So we were, you know, Detroit was really one of the battlegrounds of, of civil rights because mm -hmm. interestingly enough, although we were a Northern city and we were an, a, a, a large African-American population we were also one of the most segregated cities in the United States, mm -hmm. um, because just because of the way the population had had, had begun in, in Metro Detroit, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Henry Ford had brought in large numbers of African Americans to work in the auto plants, but had also brought in large numbers of Southern whites, and that was a really a, a friction point and and. They had segregated themselves, and Detroit was a very, very segregated place. We had mm -hmm. Dearborn, Michigan, where the whites lived, and we had Inkster. Inkster, can you imagine? If people don't know that, we still but have Inkster. But, but that's a that's, terrible name. I know. And 
it's still and a, the road a, a is suburb. still there. The road it's is still, still there. A, exactly, Inkster. Can you imagine where the black Terrible. people live? Inkster, and it's still there. Unbelievable. We didn't think of it at the time. We were ignorant. We were just kids. But it's amazing what our forefathers do. Yeah. I sad, mean, really. So sad. But the um, you wrote a great article in the Free Press, in the Detroit Free Press. Yeah, I wrote a couple recently about uh, what's going on. I'm representing, and your, your viewers are going to see this. You're going to see the video next week. Okay. He's, he's a young 16-year-old African-American who was an orphan. He was placed in a home called, uh, uh, I think it's called Lakeshore, is it? Sequel. La Lake what? Sequel. Sequel, but the Lakeshore. Oh, yeah. And it's a, it's a, that's what they call orphanages now. And uh, the uh, powers that be in the, uh, in the uh, home suffocated him to death for throwing the sandwich. He was 16 years old. There's a video of it. Three people have been charged with his killing. Um, and people can look at that uh, on the internet now. It hasn't broken nationally, but it will be the biggest story in the United States. It'll be the killing of Cornelius um, uh, Fredericks. And they can look it up. They've just charged three of the uh, workers at the orphanage. And they suffocated him for 12 minutes on videotape and then left him lying there with a nurse for another 12 minutes and didn't provide him help. It is a shocking, shocking indictment. It makes uh, what happened to um, uh, in the Floyd case uh, mm -hmm. incredibly uh, uh, poignant. Mm -hmm. who, who reached out to you if, if he was in a, if he was uh, an orphan? Well, interestingly enough, he, he, he was an orphan only because his dad, his mother had died. His dad had, had lost his uh, parental rights, but his dad reached out to me. And wow. uh, he, of course, he does have brothers and sisters. He does have a uh, um, he does have an aunt and uh, they reached out to me and we were I started a, a, a an estate and we brought a, a lawsuit just several days ago. That's amazing. But 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 you're right. Had he had he not have any living relatives, no one would have reached out to me, and this exactly. would have gone absolutely uh, uh, unattended. This which, killing, which has happened so many times, because uh, well, there's a couple things you said in your in your article. One was that if it weren't for the video tapes that exist now, we would never have known about George Floyd. Of course, that's exactly right. And and the reason we know about George Floyd and we know about Cornelius Fredericks right now is because there is a videotape. The videotape of Cornelius was ordered to be given to me today and I'll play it next week. But had we not know, seen uh, the Floyd videotape, mm -hmm. uh, the, the police would have been given a commendation for wrestling down a, uh, a vicious criminal who was resisting their arrest. They would have been given accommodation. So it, without those videotapes, we would never know what happened. We would if never you, know. You said white judges jur and jurors are complicit in police use of excessive force. Can Let me explain that? why I said that too. Yeah. And I handle as many or more of these cases than anybody. Everyone sees Ben Crump, who's a friend of mine, and he handles, he's handling the uh, George Floyd case now, but I handled Oh. The Ayanna Jones case, the policeman in Detroit who, who shot Ayanna Jones while she slept on a couch while they're filming uh, uh, the first 48 hours. I handled the Damian Grimes case. They, they shot him with a taser off of a uh, ATV, a young man here in Detroit, and killed him. Um, white Wait, jurors. I, I have to, was it like a white policeman that did it to a black? Yes. Person? Yeah, it was taking the target practice, Damian Grimes in Detroit, a Michigan State police officer. He's been convicted of uh, second degree murder. Um, with white jurors, mm -hmm. what I wrote, I wrote an editorial. Mm -hmm. White jurors don't just lean over backwards. They lean over backwards and turn backwards somersaults to exonerate the police. They're afraid to convict police officers because they believe 
that if they in some way infringe or, or impede officers, that they will be uh, vulnerable to these black hoodlum criminals. And so they never want, they, they, the benefit of the doubt doesn't really do the word justice. White jurors are by and large, and that's why you virtually have no officers convicted ever of crimes against African-Americans. Mm -hmm. White jurors don't simply give the benefit of the doubt. They are inclined to exonerate black officers, or excuse me, white officers for virtually anything they do because they're police officers. But the real psychology behind it is mm -hmm. that the whites are afraid that if they hold officers to a, an acceptable standard, a standard that they would want to be treated themselves, that they're vulnerable. To, to, to black criminals, which okay. sounds crazy, but it's true. I've seen it over a 40 year career and simply whites feel that way. So that is one of the reasons why we cannot get justice in American courts because white jurors will refuse and are reluctant to convict police officers. Also in police misconduct cases, there was a a uh, judicial doctrine developed called qualified immunity. It's not a law. It's mm -hmm. what judges came up with and they called it qualified immunity. But basically what it is, is in civil rights cases, when we sue police officers for excessive force, the courts came up with this doctrine and said, if the police officers felt that they were doing the right thing, even if they weren't, they should get immunity for doing whatever they wanted to do. And so you'd be putting your knee on Mr. Floyd's neck and killing him. And the police officer said, well, I felt threatened by him because he was resisting arrest. So I should be given immunity for killing him. And the judges would do that. Yeah. And so there is a push now to get rid of qualified immunity legislatively. But those two things have operated judges uh, making this this rule called qualified immunity and white jurors being reluctant to convict police at all. And basically that's resulted in, in, in exoneration of almost 100% of every case involving brutality of police towards African-Americans. And that is absolutely shocking or reprehensible. And that's why I felt compelled to write the editorial about it. Yeah, well, if anyone knows, you know, because you are yeah. always helping. I'm not making this up either. I don't. Want, I know that. I, I don't have any hostility towards the police. I don't have any hostility towards police officers or judges. It's just been in my observation that why why are they never never convicted, Char? Ever convicted? That's ridiculous. It's that's and we've seen these shocking videos and then they say right. well you haven't seen the whole thing I, right. i'm always right. waiting to see the whole thing i'm always waiting for the video that shows the other side of the story and i never see it i never see it with with the floyd case i never see it with any case this this other side of the video that we never right. see that explains why they killed the person do you ever right. see the other side of the no, video no i never see it ever do you, do you think that with all the demonstrations now that with Black Lives Matter, do you think it's going to make a difference? Because boy, I mean, we had the right. You know, I wouldn't have thought so. But there seems to be, have been a fundamental, and I wouldn't have thought that one killing, because there's been so many, there's been so hundreds many. of them. Right. I wouldn't think that one killing would do it. But something, I think the combination of the times of who we have as our president, yeah. of the what I think is the implicit racism that's been prevalent in this uh, administration, and mm -hmm. this particular act, which was so egregious and so clearly uh, uh, un, uh, uh, unjustified, mm -hmm. uh, set things off. And I think there's a there, there, there's a there's a change. I think there's a change. I think there's going to be a change. I would hope there's a change. Remember, I have black children. I hope there's a change. Right. My sons are are, are are children of color. And <laughs> I don't want to have to tell them, 
if you get stopped by a police officer, you listen to him, you say yes, sir, and no, sir. Mm -hmm. You do not, you put your hand on the steering wheel and you do everything because I don't want it. God forbid someday here, you know, that some officer uh, shot them or killed them. It's frightening. It's, it's so frightening. Well, do you, do you believe that, um, that, that, I, I forgot what it's called that they want to do to the policemen. They want to change, like in Minnesota, I think it is, they're getting rid of. Well, the they're not talking them. They say defund. That's nonsense. They're not going to defund the police. They're, yeah, not, they're going to have police. We're going to have public safety. But we grew up, you and I grew mm -hmm. up in a city that didn't have a police force. We had what was called a public safety force. From the 1950s, Oak Park, Michigan, was one of the most progressive cities in the United States. And we had something called public safety. We didn't have a police force and we didn't have a fire department. We had a public safety department. And the idea is that for sure, we need public safety, but we don't need a army. We don't need a police force no. we need public safety and i and and it's it, it's an unfortunate use of terms because nobody is gonna acceptably and certainly not i'm not gonna support the idea that we're not going to pay for public safety but the idea that we should pay for a semi-military police force to buy military weapons to buy black hawk helicopters to buy tanks that's nonsense. That type of use of monies is crazy. And it is not so out of the world to set up what they're talking about in Minnesota. It's an unfortunate use of the term defund. Because right. what they're really talking about is setting up public safety. And progressive right. places in this country since the 1950s, because you and I grew up in a place called Oak Park, Michigan, that had a public safety department. We did not have police and fire department. We had the Oak Park Public Safety, and do you remember? Was, yeah, and it was so safe and it was so it wonderful. It was, it was, and, and we did not have that issue. We and did we not have, have the to... issue, the idea that the police were a force against the people. It was right. an idea that they were public servants with everybody else. They mm -hmm. were also firemen. The police were, we understood in Oak Park that our police officers were firemen right. too. So they were part of the public safety. They were there to protect us and to help us. They were in our schools. And, and that is not a far out plan. And that is what they're talking about in Minnesota. But kind of the nuts use this public, this defunding thing. That's nonsense and crap. Right. Well, it would be great if they had more psychological help for people and it, it, it would. Well, you know what, but what you're talking about now, and I'll tell you something else we had in Oak Park. We also had one of the highest paid police uh, public safety departments in the state. If mm -hmm. you, if, if Oak Park, and we were a little suburb, mm -hmm. but we paid our public safety officers a lot of money and we got the very best of the best. We did. Then, for some reason, they decided to cut budgets and cut budgets. And when you're not paying anybody mm -hmm. good money, are you going to get the best of the best? Or are no. you going to get people who maybe shouldn't be public safety or police officers? Maybe they're right. better off doing something else. And right. that's the problem. If you're not going to pay, pay for, you, you get what you pay for, don't you? So true. It's so true. Oh man. So <laughs> it's, it, you know, you're making me think about how safe it was where we grew up, and I feel so That's bad for right. kids now. And it's not about, to believe me, minutes. crime isn't worse today than it was when we grew up. Mm -hmm. It's just the attention placed to it. In right. fact, right. for instance, I mean, if, if the truth be told, when we grew up, our parents opened the door in the summer, said, go out and play, and they'd be lucky if they saw us when the sun came out. And well, nobody, nobody was worried that we would be abducted off right. the street or killed. And if any parent did that today, 
in metropolitan Detroit, where I still live, they'd be probably taken into custody for child abuse. And yet mm -hmm. the number of abductions and the danger to children was greater in the 1950s and 60s, literally when we grew up, than it is today. But oh because God. of the attention placed on it by the media, right. we're hysterical about it. And we don't let we don't open our doors and let our children go out and play in the streets until nighttime. And that's what you and I did our whole life. In Oak Park, our parents opened the door in the morning, it's put us out, and we didn't come back till late at night. Isn't that true? The sunset. That's right. And it wasn't any in terms of it what the, the, the safety. We didn't believe there was an issue, but in fact, if you actually judge and you looked at the statistics, it was more dangerous then than it is now, but nobody in their right mind would do it now. Right. Who knew? Who knew? So right. it, do, do we have a few minutes? Do you have a few minutes to talk about working with Kevorkian and giving people... Well, a Jack Kevorkian, you know, and people should... Very good movie they did. Uh, you don't know Jack Al Pacino did it, and they did a simultaneous. A great yeah, they did a simultaneous release called Kevorkian on HBO, and it was done by a guy named Steve Jones. He's a very very talented producer. He lives in L.A. near you, and um, Kevorkian was just a very brilliant, brilliant guy ahead of his time. People say he wasn't the right man for the mission, but he was. Nobody else would have taken those risks well, at that time to push that issue. But let me allowed, tell you. He let, for people who don't know, he allowed people to die with dignity and assisted suicide. Yeah. And because of him today, because of what we did, um, hospice now allows you to get all the drugs you need mm -hmm. if you're sick and dying. And you can right. do it yourself. Back then, if you were dying and you went to hospice, you could only get these minimal amounts of drugs and you could, you were in agony still every minute of the of your life. Because of Kevorkian now, they don't admit it, but hospice now allows you to get all the drugs you need. Mm -hmm. You can push that button while you're connected to the morphine and morphine, you can do it yourself. Right. You can do exactly what Kevorkian did. Um, he was just a, a tremendously progressive man, and history will look at, look upon him very, very favorably. And God bless you for helping him get there and for Thank helping you. the cause. I mean, if Thank it you. weren't for you, and he was he was arrested, and then he was you got him he was parole. continually arrested, charged with parole. murder six times. I defended him six times and got him exonerated. He wanted to represent himself the final time. But your viewers need to watch the movie again and become acquainted with history. It's not that long ago. Yeah, well, I mean, to to have Lou Gehrig's disease and not be able to function is is just it's it's horrifying. It's a horrific uh, alateral myotrophic sclerosis, which is Lou Gehrig's disease, is a horrible disease. The the sufferers end up suffocating to death, which is not the right way to go. And it, uh, it, for instance, uh, uh, Thomas Yauch, uh, who, who, who ended his suffering, uh, mm -hmm. and Thomas Hyde, another one of Kevorkian's patients, they had every right in the world to make that decision. And the idea that Kevorkian helping them pass away was a crime, is a crime to humanity itself. And the people that did that to him will look, be looked at, and what I say did that to him, put Kevorkian in prison ultimately for doing that will be looked upon as as something out of the Middle Ages. Exactly. But God bless you for helping him and helping so many other people uh, stay away from having to suffer. Well, the idea is, shouldn't we be treated as well as your sonny there? Yeah. Oh. Shouldn't, you know, if he was suffering... Wouldn't you, would you want him to suffer or would of you want not. him? Of course, of course not. Of course not. Well, why wouldn't human beings be entitled to the same beneficence as your puppy there? That yep. would be insane. And yep. that's, and people do that in the name of religion. Can you imagine? Tell me the religion that wants you to suffer. Yeah. God's well, will. There's, there, there's too many dysfunctional people in our world and we need to, 
it needs a lot of healing. And I really think the young kids are, are going to really work at trying to heal the planet. I hope so. Maybe they have. Maybe we've produced a change. Maybe there's been a big change. Often when change comes, we're not totally aware of it until later. Right. right. Well, Jeffrey, thank you so much for, for taking the time. And I know it's late in Michigan and you're just such an angel. You know, my, my sister was at Cafe Cortina and saw you, but she, she didn't want to bother you. Oh, and, and I was she, just there the other day. It was wonderful. Your sister was there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 but everyone needs to know they did social distancing. They, it's outside. They, we wear and, masks. Yeah. We just and, opened up here in Michigan and I live took, right my, there. Son, my son graduated from high school that day. So we took him oh, out to dinner, but, and it was wonderful. So if you're, your sister was eating there. That was great. She yeah, with her brother. Yeah, oh, okay. she didn't want to bother you. But anyway, um, I, I'm so grateful to you and for all the work you've done to to take away fear from people and to suffering from so many people. You're you're just so special. And and Jeffrey has helped me as well. And you have a heart of gold. Thank you, Char. Thank you so much for being here. And. And we're going to look for your um, your case that's coming out next week. You're going to be busy. Yeah. Well, you tell me about what you think about the Netflix movie too, because you're in yeah. Hollywood. You know what? I'm going to watch it and then I'll I'll call you. Perfect. Okay. God bless you. Be well. All my love. Thanks, Char. Thanks. Take good care. Okay, Thanks. everybody. You Thank you. Don't go away, everybody. Um, I'm going to take a couple callers. We've got a few minutes, and I'm going to read for you. So don't go anywhere. Hey everybody, it's Sunny and Shar, and I am so excited. I am over the moon to share with you that I have a new book coming out called The Universe is Calling You. And there's an amazing forward by RuPaul. There's an endorsement by Chris Colfer. It's about understanding your in intuition. It's about protecting yourself from negative energies. It's about understanding your essence and your true purpose and your soul's purpose on this earth. You can get it at barnesandnoble.com. You can get it at amazon.com. I would love for you to order the book and let me know what you think of it. Write a review for us if you feel like it. Thanks so much. Hey everybody, it's Sunny and Shar, and I just wanted to answer a couple questions. People have been calling the office and texting and emailing. Do I do private sessions? Well, yes, I do. And uh, I love reading for my clients. I do phone, Skype, uh, FaceTime, and in person if we're in the same city. I also teach intuition. So if you have an interest in doing that, or if, you have to, uh, if you're interested in getting your family together and you want a group reading, I do those as well. So just call 248-909-2427, ask for Nicole, and I look forward to reading for you. Thanks. Okie doke, we're back. So um, what was so nice to see Jeffrey? Uh, Kurt. Yes, I have a call for you. Do we have any callers? Did anybody we, yeah. even want a reading? <laughs> we have plenty of callers for you. Uh, the first one I have is a 714, which is a California area code. Okie doke. Hi, 714, whoever you are. Hi there, Char. It's, my name is Ron, and yes, I am from Orange County, California, and I, it's uh -huh. a distinct pleasure to meet you. Thank you. It's it's my pleasure. Have we met in person or just right now? No, just right this moment. And yeah, I'm feeling the love. I, I'm so grateful for what you do, for uh, mm -hmm. spreading constructive points of view and loving energy for all of us in the collective. It's uh, I don't know that much about you, quite frankly. My good, good friend um gave you high uh recommendations to call in and so here i am well that's so kind of them please thank them for me i appreciate it sunny there's people walking by so sunny's like protecting me so um just be open-minded about everybody living and deceased okay and their names because i usually get an initial and then a name 
So, sure. uh, and don't say the name unless I say it first. So the first okay. thing I want to know is if there's somebody that's a B or R initial besides you. A V or an no, R. B is in boy, a B or R besides oh, a B. yourself. And then the other, uh, yeah. Possibly the B, yes. Is the B a female or male B? Uh, did you say a B? Uh, it's uh, it's a male. Is it, is it is it B with an R in it? If you spell it out. Yeah, it is. A, it actually has both initials. Is it is it, Rob, is it with uh, Robert or Bob? Yeah, Robert both. Bob, okay. who, yeah. who is this to you? Um, he's my uncle. And is he deceased? Yes. I feel like he's around you, and I feel like he was really fond of you. He's also showing me an M or a J initial. Do you have somebody else that's an M? Yeah. Or, which M or J? His, his wife was, was uh, M? M. Was she spelled M A? M A R. Like Mary or Margaret or Marie. Right. Mar Margaret. Yeah, I feel like they're together. And I don't, did, did you used to visit them when you were younger? Oh, yes. Um, quite I, a bit. I feel like up. I, I see children running around the house and I feel like, yep. I feel like there were cousins or siblings and they loved having you around because they're saying you were always polite oh that's it's, sweet <laughs> it's true isn't it you were always kind and polite i try to be <laughs> yeah and who there's yeah. somebody else that's an m or j initial besides your aunt margaret did you have a grandmother that's, that's uh yeah actually i had a grandmother with him yes be like mary or, I would, was she mary or martha yeah. uh marie i was marie. yeah I said super marie close to her yeah marie is your grandma's around you as well and have you had um did you have an issue with your leg or your back yes i have both and are you um are you getting physical therapy for it? Um, no, not really. But it, but it's bothering you, right? It does, yes. But I, yeah. I just push through it, you know. Look at, I'm not allowed to um, give medical advice, but I feel like you, you could, you could get away from some of the pain by stretching or a physical therapist right. who could help you to build the muscle around your body. So you, so you, I feel like you need stretching. Right. You don't stretch. Not anymore lately, no. But I used to do a lot of yoga and it did help. Yes, and back you, when, you, way back you, when. Are you able to do it now? Are you able to do yoga now? Uh, there's no reason not to, except for I'm um, just ornery. <laughs> okay, well, I, no. I feel like you need to start doing this because you're not old. <laughs> you know, Aww, you're, you're, I, I sure feel old. I know you feel <laughs> old, but you, you're not old. And you, you start taking supplements, you start stretching, you can you can yeah. change your attitude about whatever is going on. Anyway, yeah. Ron, thank you so much for calling. I need to get some other people in here. Otherwise, I'd love to talk to you more. But thank you so much. No, absolutely. Thank you so much for what you offered and what you continue to offer for everyone. You're so kind to thank say you. that. It's, it's my privilege and my honor. Thank you so much. Take good care of yourself. Mine as well. Thank you. Thank you. What a sweet man. My goodness. We have so many great Char visionaries. Who do we have now, Kurt? I have a 480, 480 which is an Arizona area code. Hi, Arizona. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yay. Thank you so much for calling. <laughs> thank you for taking my call. 
Yeah, of course. It's my pleasure. So I'm getting a couple things. I'm getting an L or an EL. Do you, have, do you have family that's an L or EL? And the other thing I was getting was an S or C. Um, <laughs> so my husband's name is Steve. Oh, and I actually live in South Carolina. Okay, okay, SC South Carolina. Okay, don't tell me names. Just say yes or no. But your husband, Steve, oh, right? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And do you guys go by the water or have a pool? Yes. What you have a swimming pool, or you or you walk by, or you live near the water? Oh, we like to go to the water a lot. You walk to the water. Okay. Um. I'm, I'm seeing that. I, I, I'm seeing that. Does, um, who's Michael, Mike or Mark or Mike or M? Um, my mom's name starts with an M. Is she M A or M I? M A. Is she like Mary or Marie or Marjorie? Yes. Okay, and and is your mom living then? Yes. Are you worried about her health right now? Yes. Is, is she on medication? Yes. Okay, and and also with the COVID thing, uh, is she staying protected? Yes. It, is is there someone taking care of her in her home? Um, yeah, her husband, my dad. Your dad. Yeah, I, I want to make sure that they are careful. Is he an R or D initial or R or B? Yeah, he's an R. Uh, does, he, does he start with an R? Yes. Like, is he R-O or R-I? R O like Robert or Ron or yeah yes yeah. I, I I don't I want to make sure that they take extra special care of themselves like especially with this COVID thing like wearing their masks and being social distanced and whatever else is smart okay are they who does their grocery shopping they do See what I mean? And your mom, yeah. your mom's a high risk, right? Yeah. Okay. Just make sure that they're that they use the hand sanitizer. That they're extra careful. I feel okay. like there's another surge coming right now, and I mean it's also obvious if you turn on the TV, you know, or read the newspaper. There. The media is talking about how it's 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 starting to get out of hand again, mm -hmm. and especially young people are more prone to it as well. So just make sure they they wear their masks and are, and take care of themselves. Do you live far away from them? No, you live near them. Yeah. So maybe you can help them out or maybe they can order their groceries. I think who's, who's like, is your dad the one who doesn't want to leave uh, or, or is your dad who does is the one that doesn't want to stay in the house or is it your mom? Somebody doesn't like, they get it's, cabin fever. <laughs> it's my, it's my mom. Yeah. She's got too much cabin fever. She's got to be more careful. Okay. Who's. E-L, I don't, E or L, you don't have a deceased E or L, do you? Or is there another A or M? Is your grandmother an A or an M or? My, my grandmother's name was, um, yeah, it was, her first name was an A and her middle name was an M. My was daughter's like, name is also an M. Was, was it like Anne Marie or A-N or no. A-L? Um, her first name was A M. A M. Started with an A and an M, and then what, yeah, and then her middle like name Amelia, was an M A. Amelia or Amanda. Yes. Yeah. Amelia. 
Yeah, she's here. Your grandma's spirit is here. And they're also telling me about Joseph or Jay or James. I don't know, Jay. I don't know that. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anybody with a J. <laughs> J or G. It could be a J or G. Maybe connected to your dad, family, or your mom's. I don't know. I'm sure. But that's okay. So your mom, but Amelia's here with watching over your family. Did you, did you even that's know nice her? To know. Did you, did you know, you knew her? I right? did. Yes, I did. Yes. Yeah, because I feel I'm seeing a little girl by somebody's got an air, uh, an apron on. I, I don't know. Did she wear an apron yeah. all the time? No, my mom did. Um, did. Oh, okay. My mom did. Yeah. She was always cooking. <laughs> and you were always in the kitchen with your mom? Yes. Yeah. And they're showing me a bird or a dog. Did you have a dog when you grew up? Yes. I think that that dog is here. I had lots of dogs, actually. Yeah, I feel like there's a dog, like either a black and white or tan and white dog. Hmm. I don't know who the, I, I don't know. There's, there's a dog here with, uh, that was your mom's dog or it, was there a brown and white or brown with a speck of white or something? Um, we did have a, like a brown and white dog for a while that was my brother's. Yeah, maybe that's who I, what I'm seeing. Um, anyway, um, just be safe and, and make sure they're safe, okay? Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for calling. I appreciate you watching. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, everybody, um, it's time for us to say goodbye for now, but I'll be back here next Friday. And, you know, oh, I was thinking, you know, we're going through so much stress right now. I was thinking if you get my, you can get my chakra CD and you can actually get it on iTunes. If you're stressed and going through a hard time now, which we all are because of the COVID thing, getting cabin fever, this really is healing. If I do say so myself, I, I had someone compose music for me to balance our chakras and each one of, we have seven major energy centers in our chakras and each one resonates with a musical note and a color. And I take you through the steps of it. So um, you can get it on iTunes. And um, I wanna thank everybody who's been calling in for readings. I'm, I'm getting everybody in as quickly as I can. I appreciate your support and I love meeting and talking to you intimately on, on FaceTime or, or the phone or Skype. It's, it's, really, it's really comforting to me to connect with all you guys. So thank you so much for, for being here. And, and also I wanna thank Jeffrey Feiger. Who, <laughs> I wasn't sure what he was gonna say about me from growing up from those days, <laughs> but he was a gentleman. Anyway, take good care of yourselves and wear your, wear your masks, stay six feet away from each other. This, this virus isn't going away anytime soon. God bless you, be well, and remember, intuition will take you places logic never could. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.